Hello, this is Dr. Stephanie D. Barnes with C-Suite Women's Network, where I help women and a few good men to be the CEOs of their lives so they can be better CEOs of their business. And I am happy to continue the series, What's in Your Wallet? Building the Social Capital to Build Your Wealth. Because as I introduced in the first segment of this series, it takes social capital to build financial capital. In other words, you need people. And I introduced the concept of, of cognitive, relational, and structural social capital. Cognitive, your mental mindsets, the environment that feeds your mind. Relational social capital, those relationships and how they add value and structural social capital where you are in the network and your relative position in comparison to others. And today I want to focus on something that helps you to truly assess and then to build your social capital in the relational area. So, you know, not all social capital is valuable because, you know, if you surround yourself with nine broke people, you're going to be the 10th, right? If you surround yourself with negative environments, you know, you are going to be in a situation where you're going to be continuously broke. Now, broke doesn't always mean financially deficient, but it could mean a negative mental model that bankrupts your spirit, bankrupts your mindset, and eventually bankrupts your bank account. So, you know, you want to make sure that you are building relationships that help you to actually build, you know, the mental mindset that enables you to understand who you have in your network and how you are being enriched or if you're being enriched, right? Because, you know, sometimes you don't understand the cost of exclusion from social networks, the cost that it has to you and what it keeps you from doing. Because, you know, at the heart of every business relationship, is a personal relationship and people do business with people they trust. In companies, they promote people they know and like. And in the marketplace, they do business with and refer people they know and like. And even though there's an underlying, you know, value associated with that person's skill set, ultimately it's related to the person. So, you know, it's important to recognize that, you know, Social groups in the workplace are really very important because some people ascribe to the position that, well, you know, these are not my friends. I go to work to work and then I go home. And, you know, whether you want to be friends, you know, with the people you work with or not, it is important for you to develop social relationships because social marginalization has a cost. Sometimes it's, a, it's just because of people's, you know, intentions in terms of, of how and who they want to deal with and, and how social they want to be at work. Sometimes it's related to race and gender. and gender, And it's important to recognize both on the, on either side of it, to be conscious of how you're building social relationships. Because I can recall, you know, as a woman in a male dominated environment, there were many times that I was excluded from social gatherings that the men in the workplace did. Like after the board meetings, they would go and grab a beer. And the thing is, it's not that I wanted to necessarily go and drink with them, but the fact is that was a social environment where they talked casually about things, built relationships that enabled them to be more comfortable with each other at work. Now it could have just as well been something that didn't involve grabbing a beer after a board meeting. But the point is that that was a social gathering that enable them to build social relationships. The same thing can happen in a pr professional setting. Who you eat lunch with, how you socialize on the job has an impact on the social relationships you build and the social capital that you are able to acquire. So the first, so what I want you to think about today is this. You know, are you being deliberate about the relationships that you're bringing? And as we go through these segments, I'll give you more specific information that helps you to, to really craft a plan around how to do that. But today in this segment, I want you to think about 
the exclusion, the negative social capital and what it's costing you. And that could be socializing, building social relationships with people who are not adding value to you or being excluded from social relationships that could add value to you because they give you access to people and opportunities that position you for promotions or positions you for greater business deals or greater business transactions, or otherwise positions you to have greater structural capital, again, a better position in your network. So that's your homework for today, is to really think about, on the one hand, are you being excluded from social groups in the workplace that could be negatively affecting your social capital? And then on the other hand, are you excluding people who could be adding value? Because if you constantly work with the same people all the time, you may be depriving yourself of the opportunity to build positive social capital with others who don't look like you, who don't do the same things that you do. And again, that has a cost to you. So this is Dr. Stephanie D. Barnes, CEO of C-Suite Women's Network, and I help women and a few good men to be the CEOs of their lives so they can be better CEOs in their businesses. And I would love to help you to develop more valuable social capital. So why don't you go over to www.discovertheceoinu.com www.discovertheceoinu.com and set up a free strategy session where we can see what you can do to build greater social capital and get yourself into the C-suite of your life. This is Dr. Stephanie D. Barnes and I want you to remember your life is the product of your choices. Choose to be the CEO of your life. Choose to make the decisions that create the life you desire and deserve. See you in the C-suite.